Well, hello everyone and welcome, welcome, first of all, to the month of February. Wow, <laughs> time sure is going fast. Well, welcome to all of you. Yes, as you come in, please say hello. Let us know how you're doing. Uh, hopefully no one's in really nasty weather today. Um, I know Julie's in Denver and I think it's okay for now, right? <laughs> I'm Joan Burge. I'm founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International. We are a global leader in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative office professionals. And we have been doing this for 30 years. Yes, this year is our 30 year celebration. And I am super excited because we have a lot of things planned for you. So um, I'm really, really excited about today's webinar and uh, I'm sure my energy is going to show through and I'm going to try to stay very focused because I know that we have a lot of great information to share with you today. And I'm very excited that Julie Reed is here with us. Julie is a, a phenomenal individual. I've known Julie for several years, first of all, as a client of Office Dynamics, and she's going to tell you a little bit about that. And then she has been our elite trainer for two years now, almost two years Julie's been working with us. She is the uh, oh facilitator extraordinaire of our world-class assistant courses. She's done a lot of on-site coaching work for us, a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. She's just spectacular. I'm excited she's here because I know she has a lot of wonderful things to share with you. So first of all, a couple logistics as you are coming into the webinar. First of all, um, the platform has, has changed over. We're still using Webinar Jam, but they've made some changes to the platform. So if you were an auto subscriber, the next time we have a webinar and you register, you will need to auto subscribe again. So sorry for that. It's nothing you know we can control. Um, but just remember to do that if you can, so then you get invites to the future webinars. We are going to uh, cover probably about 45 minutes at least of learning time. Like I said, we have a lot of great information to share with you. You can post your questions at any time you would like throughout the webinar. We will have a Q&A later. We do not have handouts, so you're going to have to be a really good listener. Don't multitask. Take good notes. You won't want to miss a thing. Um, if you have any technical issues, the only support we can give you is through the chat. So please let us know. Oh, Boca Raton, Florida. I bet you have nice weather down there. Stacy from Trin Trinidad. Trinidad. All over. Okay. Um, let me get back to my notes here. We will send a replay link at, at uh, the end of the webinar. An email will go out, I think, by the end of today where you'll get a replay link and you'll be able to play back. And here's some of the great things that Julie's going to talk about. So without further ado, we're going to talk, first of all, about how Julie and I stayed motivated about our careers, because both of us were in the administrative profession for many, many years. But I'm going to let Judy, Julie start first. And Julie, also have you share some of your background information. And then I know you'll roll into your next piece. OK. Hi. Welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. As Joan mentioned, I am a career administrative professional who is passionate about my career of choice. I consider myself a huge advocate for the role and also for the individuals who fill these positions. I honestly believe when we truly embrace our full potential in this role, we can become cultural influencers, business partners, we can become daily leaders. There are so many opportunities for us to optimize our contributions. And this is what I am passionate about. As Joan said, I'll share a little bit of my background with you for those of you who aren't familiar with me. In my former role, I was very fortunate to be supported by an executive who saw the value in a productive partnership with his administrative assistant. And it was him who pushed me to challenge not only myself, but the current administrative professionals to lean in and to level up. 
Through this opportunity, I then developed as a manager, a mentor, a coach, and ultimately as a trainer. In looking back, there were multiple, multiple benefits to accepting this assignment. And yeah, I accepted it. One, I personally became more engaged, more aware. I was more motivated. Looking back, it's a little crazy that I had to rely on someone else to provide me that motive, motivation. I should have been my own motivator. Secondly, through my research and diving into this project, I learned, and with a lot of disappointment, quite honestly, how few programs there are for executive administrative assistance and administrative assistance by any other title out there to receive training. As you may have concluded, my journey brought me to Joan Burge and Office Dynamics. Yay! Yeah. Now for the real work. <laughs> because you see, all of my research, thought out presentations, all of that, when I presented it, I was met with a firm decline. I was told, these are great ideas. This is truly necessary, but not now. The timing's not right. We're understaffed, quite honestly, just not our priority. Again, I accepted this as a challenge thrown down, and I accepted it. I maintained my motivation. Through this step, another benefit, I now started to develop as a project manager, and I developed my own personal executive presence. I started to change how I presented my ideas. I created data-driven stories and business cases, and I took it directly to the CEO in the executive language that he would hear and understand. Guess what? Again, denied. What? <laughs> you asked me to do this, so therefore I should get a blank stamp approval, right? So at this point in time, I'm very confused. I'm feeling defeated, actually frustrated. I was developing a bad attitude. I remember reaching out to Joan directly and saying to her, I don't know what to do. I am at a bootstrap moment here and I can pick myself up and turn around my rally cap and try one more time or I can just go sit in the corner. But you know what? Nobody puts this baby in the corner. And this was my passion. And so the way I spun the story, the narrative that I told myself was his denial just meant that I was now playing the game. He heard me, but he also challenged me, just like I had seen him do with others who had gone into his office and came right back out. Nobody gets a yes run with it without first being asked to modify it to make it better. I was asked to come back with options, to refine and redesign my ideas. Again, I was heard and I felt respected. And in the end, on my third attempt and three years later, I received approval. Again, the approval I got was for a program that was much better than I had originally proposed. So I had to find that silver lining. And with Office Dynamics, I was able to bring in the STAR training program. Our training was now aligned with the company mission, visions, and goals, and the concept grew. I also continued to grow because now the next step, the next benefit, I became a daily leader amongst my peers, fighting for and delivering professional development that had never been provided before but it was so passionately craved. Via the STAR program and together, we developed internal talent, we created opportunities, and most importantly, we changed the perception of our role. We elevated our value. That became my legacy at my former company. I take pride knowing that I influenced the culture and shifted the paradigms and I honestly believe I impacted individuals along the way, as they did me. I tell every group I teach and talk to, every interaction, I develop as much as you do. There's success stories, and there is celebration around the courage and the willingness for my peers to step into this space with me. 
you talk about maintaining passion. There was this pure synergy, a synchronized energy. We felt more empowered. We felt confident and we became cognizant. We now can understand the parallels of the admin role to the executive team. We found intersections where the opportunities were hidden so that we could now contribute. And through this process, we started communicating it. As Ariana Huffington tells us, first we had to communicate it inward. We had to have that self-talk, then outward and ultimately upward. We earned our place on the team with trust, empowerment, accountability, with motivation. Team, trust, empowerment, accountability, and motivation. We were contributors to the collective success. Again, we became members of the team. Now that inspires passion, yeah? So here's the thing I want you to get out of this whole story. Companies are people. When you feel siloed, it's demoralizing, and quite honestly, it's uninspiring. It not only impact, impacts the professional you, it impacts the personal you. You know my spiel, there is no separation. We are one person, personal and professional. Companies are people. When you work with people, it fosters creativity, innovation, you generate new ideas, you blend talents, you work towards a common goal, and you boost productivity. Working with others strengthens your emotional intelligence. As you build trust, you invest in productive partnerships, you resolve conflicts, you actually expand your network, break down those walls, get out of that silo. Now in a healthy environment, because we know not all teams are healthy, working with others boosts your self-esteem. It enables you personally to take risk, increase your skills with that cross-pollination, and it gives you a stage to showcase your talents. Excuse me, companies are people. So it's in your best interest and the interest of your company to work with others and to be part of the team. So I challenge you, find your team, join the team, leverage your strengths on the team and get your seat at the table. I want you to value every day and add value every day with meaningful work. Author Sean Aker defines happiness as the joy you feel striving towards your full potential. The joy you feel striving towards your full potential. Now that's passion. <laughs> this is also validated in an article called Connecting People with Purpose. And I wanna read the quote to you if I may. Connecting people with purpose. Among great workplaces, more than any other factor, an employee's belief that their work has special meaning is most closely associated with the desire to stay with that company. And yet, do you know 85% of colleagues worldwide report that they feel unengaged? It's up to you. It's up to you to re-engage and to find your passion. It is up to you to keep yourself in the equation. That was wonderful. Really good. Gosh, that was fabulous. Uh, all right, so my turn. I guess we're going to ping pong back and forth here a little bit. I'm going to answer that question, too. What kept me motivated? I mean, when you think about working 20 years in a profession. And so, um, well, first of all, in my early years, I was very motivated about the idea of moving up. <laughs> that was a big motivator for me. I wanted to get to work for an executive as soon as I possibly could. I wanted to work for a vice president and then a CEO and all of that. So, of course, that was very motivating because I was trying to figure out, you know, how to get there and how to be the best assistant. But over the long term, you know, after, you know, aside from that and over all those years. So I've got five ideas here. Number one is I was looking, I always looked for areas I could insert myself 
and be of greater assistance. So even as busy as I was, I was still looking, you know, where can I jump in and insert myself and how that helped me. It was, it helped me to stretch and to grow and to learn new things. So I jumped in in areas that I was not familiar with. These weren't areas that I knew. Second, continually being a sponge. And that's how I am motivated to this day after 50 years of being in the workplace. I am absolute sponge. Every single day I learn from people. I, I listen, I observe, I watch, I read. Um, so that, of course, keeps me motivated. I'm always in the student mode. Third, by attending administrative conferences. Yes, when I was working way back when, um, I actually belonged to Professional Secretaries International. I attended our chapter meetings. I networked with other assistants. That was very motivating. I love to go to the conferences. That was absolute fun and meeting new people and learning a lot of things. You know, that's a that was a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal today to get to go to a conference, but back then it was really a big deal. Uh, the fourth, it was adding a new twist to what I already knew. So as an assistant, you know, there's a lot of things you do over and over and over, setting up the same meetings and getting out the same announcements. And that could get really boring. So I used to think, how can I do this differently? How can I switch this up? How can I shake this up? And I still like to do that today as well. And then my fifth way I stayed motivated was challenging the status quo. Love to challenge the status quo. Just because something was always done a certain way, it does not mean it had to continue to be done that way. So the, those were ways I stayed motivated. And I think for a side note really quick, it's important to stay motivated, you know, in this profession, especially if this is your career and really whatever career we choose, we need to stay motivated. Um, all right, so our next question I have for Julie and I are, what do we love about this profession? Because today is about love your career. So Julie, I'm gonna let you go first. And also those of you who are on the webinar with us, if you wanna, type in or in the chat anything you love about the career we would love to see that as well so julie i'm gonna toss it back to you yay okay love and so just so you know i couldn't think of just one of course <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think i have three here um first and foremost for me it's the legacy of the profession we are deeply rooted in history and the men and women who held this position before us they worked so hard and tirelessly to not be confined by their role and to not be defined by their role. Our role has been ever changing, always reaching. It is limitless. Just look at the title changes over the years. Secretaries, assistants, um, administrative professionals. Now we're being referred to as strategic partners. Always moving. I love that. I have been in trainings myself, classrooms, I've coached multiple people one-on-one, -on -one, and as you know, facilitated in front of groups. Every group has been diverse in their makeup. Even the groups that I sat in as a student, what I noticed all the time is that we're all more similar than we are different, and we want to succeed. We take pride in our profession, and our contributions. I love that. We have a legacy that we should honor. Secondly, I loved having a front row seat. I saw strategies develop from the beginning to the end. I was a confidant and actually I became an advisor. I was the eyes, the ears. Oftentimes I was the face of the CEO. Again, I was part of the team. And I loved how that felt. And finally, okay, stick with me because you may not like this. <laughs> I liked the power. It is a very powerful position. You know, I recently saw a conversation uh, on LinkedIn uh, that was headed up by Jeremy Burroughs. Um, and he talked about how he once felt very embarrassed because uh, it's probably happened to all of us. Someone waved to him across the room and he waved back. 
only to realize they weren't waving at him. It was the person over his shoulder. So that's happened to me. You just, you're crumbled. It's awkward. How do you react? But then he equated this to oftentimes I felt that way when I was working with my executive. I realized people were approaching me and coming to me only to get to my executive. And that's true. That's probably happened to all of you. Um, I didn't think that was a bad thing. I actually enjoyed that. Yeah, you got to come through me. He even told people, go see Julie. She'll get you on the calendar. You know, that kind of stuff. I loved that power. I was told that I could stop the world with one phone call. It got to the point where they didn't even have to pick up the phone. They would see my name on caller ID and show up on the executive floor. That's power. I was sought after for an opinion. I was sought after for insights. I became a historian. I became a connector of people. And yeah, I was a gatekeeper. But again, I didn't want to abuse that power. I became a gatekeeper with compassion. I tried to set people up to succeed. That temperature check, maybe not such a good time to go in. This is how you want to approach him. Those kind of things, that's power. Power is not a bad word. Embrace your power. People are drawn to powerful people. How many of you align yourself with somebody that's a loser, right? That's a reality. People are drawn to power. And when you attract people to you, that's when you have a chance to impact. So embrace the power of you. Embrace the power of this position. Embrace the power of this role. So those are my three things. I loved the legacy and I loved the power. And what was the third one? Second row. 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 I got it right here. I love it. I'm glad you're listening, Joan. <laughs> I am. And I love I love the legacy one when I first saw your notes. I was like, legacy. Wow, I never thought of that. That was so cool. Um, and of course, front row seat and the power. And I just, I was making some notes. I was listening, but having ideas about, I think that would be a great webinar one day, Julie, um, on embracing the power of you, because I think, um, power could be seen very negatively, right? And for some assistants, they may be afraid to be powerful, but there's a very, there's a, an appropriate way to use your power, to be powerful. And we know that's what we teach in every class to assistants. Every, every program we do, we're teaching them to be powerful and to realize you know, that potential that they have, but it's a matter of how you do it, right? How you say it. So I have a note, because I think that would make for a really good webinar. What do all of you out there think? Would you like us to do something about, um, embracing your power and how you do that in a tactful way and what does it look like i think that might be a good conversation okay. all right for me um what what did i love wow there were a lot of things um i have what six i think <laughs> but mine are short to the point i love that you have the opportunity to develop all right there's a yes to that <laughs> webinar okay julie put it down I'm writing, I'm writing. <laughs> Take note of that, and it will capture your comments um, if you have ideas of what aspect of power you want us to talk about. Yeah. We need to survey you folks more and see what you want us to cover this year for webinars. <laughs> if you have ideas, by the way, you can always call Malia or write Malia um, and let us know. So anyway, I love the opportunity that you have the the chance to develop so many different skills. It is mind boggling when I think about all the skills you develop as an administrative office professional. And I know that when I started my company and am running it for 30 years, a lot of the skills that I rely on are skills I learned as an assistant, right? They're huge. And I don't believe anybody could uh, any career could tout <laughs> the skills that you you have as an assistant because of the, the massive networks you have and the responsibility you have to manage someone's life and so forth. Uh, secondly, the variety of work. I love variety. 
Um, and if I was in a job that didn't offer the variety, I left. I didn't last very long. But those were far and few between, maybe one job, okay? But if you look at it, <laughs> while I know we complain about all the different things you have to do, but oh my goodness, I, I couldn't stand it if I didn't have that variety when I was an assistant. To me, the challenge of every day, right? When you walk into work as an assistant, you think you have everything set and organized, and then your executive rolls in or calls you and everything changes. <laughs> or later in the day, they step out of their office and everything changes. So I liked that um, because it challenged my thinking and that's what kept me motivated and that's what kept me young and that's what kept me fresh. And, and kept me learning and growing. The fourth, working with so many different people and personalities. Just think, you know, as an assistant, think about all the people you know, all the different personalities you, you work with, and you have to learn how to develop those skills because as we know as assistants, there are some personalities we don't necessarily like, but if we're that star assistant, we're gonna develop those relationships. Like Julie, absolutely. I love the front row seat. Yes, I love the power. And I love my last one that my executives fully relied on me to run their life. Talk about power. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who else does that? <laughs> so anyways, um, I know we're going to keep moving on here. We love that. We want to focus now on building your career and yourself. So this is about loving your career. Well, how do you build a career? I mean, this is your career. And so I do want to spend this time now really devoted to you. Um, and we're going to talk about why self-investment matters. How do you figure out what you need to do? There's so many options today. How do you build your career? So first of all, we're going to start with why continued self-investment matters. And Julie, I'm going to let you go first on that one. Again, you're going to hear me repeat myself here, but it's that engagement. As Joan said, that's how we stay fresh. That's how we stay motivated. That's how we stay engaged. I love the quote from Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's. Um, when we are green, we are growing. When we are not, we rot. I'd rather grow, how about you? So what I said to Joan when we were bouncing ideas around about this webinar, is I said, I want people to think about their career as a noun. So how do you define a noun? A person, place, and thing. So first of all, the person is you. Before you can reignite passion and invest in your own development, you must, capital letters, you must believe you are a manager of your own career. You are the manager of your own engagement, and it's up to you to find that passion. Become the boss of you. Remain relevant and then control your outcomes. All of this, it'll boost your self-esteem. Trust me, I lived it. Do it for you. And please don't do it just in time. Do it just in case. I encourage you to invest in yourself. Your career is not a thing because when we think of it as a thing, it becomes an inanimate object. Very easy to be ignored, to be neglected, to be sidelined, right, by other priorities. Your career, your engagement, it requires constant feed and care. I like to think of my career as a place because then I can visualize it. I can come up with a plan. How does it feel? Where does it take me? How do I even know when I'm there? What does winning look like? Because without a defined destination, without that targeted approach, it's very easy to lose your way. So invest in yourself, step up, level up, keep up. Boy, are we moving at fast pace, right? We hear that all the time. Keep up. Push yourself beyond that fixed mindset and into a growth mindset. Ignite the fire in you and find your passion. Jenna? That's really good. Sorry, I get so enthralled listening to you. So I kind of... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh gosh, I love all those pieces. Like, is there anything I wanted to circle back with? Um, I think you have the expand your thinking, right? Growing in confidence you talked about, and with me, I love the level up. I'm hearing, by the way, I'm hearing that word a lot now. Um, I used to hear upskilling way back, but I'm hearing executives use level up a lot and uh, also learning and development professionals. So when we talk about executive speak, which is something we teach, Julie and I, that would be something to add to our list for executive speak, to level up. Um, for me, well, first of all, ditto with Julie, you know, about investing in yourself. But I came across, I have a visual I've been holding on to for about six months. I'm still trying to get to, to lay it out appropriately. But I want to show you this visual a moment because this is why, and this is actually why I started Office Dynamics. Very rough notes. I don't expect you to see everything, but I'll show it to you. So th this is the typical. Let, let's look at this one. This is typical today, the typical situation. Here is your executive, and here's their, their path. They're learning, they're growing, they're learning, they're growing, they're learning, they're growing, they're attending conferences, they're going to training, they're going to events. Here is the typical assistance path, flat. That does not make sense at all. That is why I started Office Dynamics. These two need to be in tandem, which is I was drafting out here. Your line needs to be going like this. How can you support and run someone's life if you're flatlined? It doesn't work. And eventually it will catch up with you. So keep this visual in your mind of what typically exists and what it needs to look like. That could be a part of your your visualization. So that's one and a very big reason why you need to self-develop. And there are a lot of ways you can do that. We'll talk about it later. But again, it, it all ties together. If this is your career, you're going to need to develop. You should want to develop. You should want to invest in this. Secondly is, or my third one, because my first one was Ditto to Julie. Second was my visual. Third, so you don't get left behind. I mean, that's huge. So there was an article, some of you heard me talk about it in the Wall Street Journal that appeared January 18th. And I was really upset about the article and I did write a rebuttal about it. But the article focused on the dying breed, the dying profession, how many jobs are being eliminated in this profession. Yes, because of technology. Yes, because executives are more independent. But there, um, the it was interesting because the article, the writer focused on assistants, several assistants who lost their jobs. I think most of them were in their 50s. And they couldn't find jobs. They were out forever. And so these were very frustrated assistants. And I thought to myself, well, you know, have you been training? Had you been training yourself? Had you been developing? Because if not, then shame on you. So the, the idea is you, if you don't invest in you, um, then don't get mad at other people because you don't get promotions or you don't get opportunities or you don't get to, to be part of that management team. I mean, it goes back to Julie, what you were saying earlier, own it, be your boss, be your boss. I love that, how you said that. And then the, the fourth one is investing in you is the best investment you'll ever make. And I heard that in 1990 from Brian Tracy when I first went into training and development. And I love Brian Tracy, absolutely love him. Um, and I'll never ever forget that phrase. And the idea was when you invest in yourself, time, money, whatever, it is something you will take with you the rest of your life. No one can ever take that away from you. And that to me, if I'm gonna invest in anything, I wanna bet on Joan because I can control a lot of things. 
and I can control my future even when bad things happen. I can still take back my control. Mm -hmm. right. um, so anyways, you can tell Julie and I get all pumped about this because this is our passion and we're passionate about this for you. So now the next question, of course, all right, let's say you're, yes, I'm ready, I'm ready, I need to do that, I need to make 2020 my year. <laughs> How do you identify though your particular needs? Um, and that's what we wanna focus on next and kind of guide you because I know a lot of times assistants will call us or they'll write us, they'll even write me privately on LinkedIn asking me kind of here's where I am, here's what I'm thinking about, how do I even figure out what kind of training I should take, Joan? I don't even know. So that's what we were gonna talk about next with you is how you identify your own training and developmental needs. And this is perfect because it's early in the new year. So Julie, I know you have several great ideas to share. No, thank you. Um, and, and just to build on you, again, you have to think about this as an investment and an investment in you. So if you're going to take this step and invest in your development, I say be selfish. If you attended the 2019 conference in Vegas, you might have heard me talk about your strengths zone. So that's one way you can identify how do I want to develop. We don't have enough time today to go into the whole thing. Again, I also have a presentation on that. If you want us to redo it, we can. But it's important that before you invest in development, you're spending the money and the time wisely. So identify your strengths. So the easiest definition for your strength is it's the behaviors behind your skills. If you list your skills, I don't know, travel management, calendar management, that kind of stuff, everybody does that. What floats you to the top? What is the behavior that you apply to that task that supports your skill, that's your strength. And then what you need to do is constantly, continually, honestly, keyword there, honestly, analyze your end results. What results are you skill generating? That's your strength. Play from your strength zone and position yourself by developing your strengths. Then think about what abilities do I need to enhance to get even better results, or maybe just to get the results I want. That would be your growth and development. That's where you find out where to invest. What unproductive habits are preventing you from creating the outcomes that you desire? That's how you find out your weaknesses. I say, if you're gonna invest in yourself, don't worry about improving your weaknesses is your first step. That would be my advice to you because we can overcome our weaknesses. Again, especially if we're part of a team, we leverage other people's strengths. I encourage you to leverage your strengths. That's what's going to push you forward and further. It's that growth and that development. That's what creates motivation. That's what energizes you. All of this is captured in the book, Strength Finders, and they quote, you are six more times likely to be engaged in the workplace when you're working from your strength zone. Think about that. You wanna talk about a return on investment? If you have to come up with a business case for your executive to ask for training, if you have to convince yourself to invest in your own training, even if it's your own time, your own money, your return, six times the engagement. So again, don't do it just in time, do it just in case. Drive defensively, get off autopilot. And more importantly, I encourage you to give yourself permission to succeed. Give yourself permission to take time to think before you invest, to think about you. Give yourself time to think about you, to pause and reflect honestly. An image that comes to mind for me around this, in my opinion, we spend more time making a cup of hot tea than we do thinking about our careers and ourselves. We boil the water, we pour it over the tea bag, we hold it, maybe we pick that special cup, we smell, then we find the special place to sit and enjoy it. It's a cup of tea. Aren't you worth that same amount of time? So create that atmosphere, find that place, that quiet place, 
and reflect on you. And then I suggest from here, you draft a mission statement. So your mission statement is you today, and then write it down. This is called sticky science. It has been proven that if we write things down, we retain, excuse me, we retain them more. Now, I would like to quote author and career coach Dan Miller here. So your mission statement should include your skills and your abilities. What do you like to do? It doesn't have to be that complicated. This shouldn't intimidate you. Write down what you like to do. And then write down the behaviors, your personality traits. That's how you do it. Capture your values, your dreams, your passions. That's your why. It's the golden circle that's shared with us that I teach to all my classes by Simon Sinek. It's your why. Not what you do, not how you do it, but why. This becomes your mission statement. Again, I don't want you to just go out there and grab training. Think about it first. Then after you have a mission statement, build on it. Create your vision statement the future you. Define it. Write it down. That's that vision, right? Envision the very best you can be. Because now this becomes your guiding light down that dark road. This becomes your map, your compass. This helps you silence that negative self-talk, that self-doubt. It changes your internal narrative. You have a choice. I love what Joan said. Why not do it? What are you waiting for? If not now, then when? If not you, then who? You have a choice here. You don't need somebody's approval to get training. You can motivate yourself and ignite that passion. So choose. Intentionally gain control of your career. Coexist within your values and align with your goals shift to that growth mindset. I want you to think about how you think. Choose, choose to become engaged, passionately engaged, the theme for today. Choose to invest in you. You're worth it. I value you, value yourself. Choose to achieve and put forth the effort to succeed and then exceed all expectations. I want to share another quote with you. This is from Carl Jung, J-U-N-G. He's a psychologist, psychiatrist, journalist, and inventor. And he writes, your vision will become clear only when you look inside your own heart. He who looks outside just dreams. He who looks inside is awakened. I think that's really powerful. That is. And it just, I was just... Um thinking here that, you know, it's interesting kind of being an attendee while you're talking, Julie, because <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, all right, I could see where some assistants might be watching us and listening and thinking, but everything's going along great. I mean, I have a great position. My executive's happy. Like, why do I need to do this? Well, again, it, it goes back to the reasons that we were saying earlier, right? to stay motivated, to continue to have the passion, to stay fresh, to stay young, stay competitive. Um, and because you can. Right, and I, I feel like it's, I always say, don't ever be so comfortable that then <clears throat> something happens tomorrow because that's the other reason. I mean, I know too many assistants that have thought they were safe, thought they were secure, and then I get a phone call and they lost their job like that. Yep. They're in total shock and they're not prepared to go out um, and, and compete. And so for me, I'm I'm I push this and I've been pushing it for years as a very to be very proactive because I want to I want you to protect yourselves. Kind of like what Julie's saying, don't don't wait, don't just in time it just it's that just in case, as you say, that I really like. And you know, we, Julie and I are out there. We see it and we hear it all the time in all these different companies. And we're, we can't just, we can't say it enough to you. 
Um, we want you to be as prepared as possible for whatever might come your way, good or bad, <laughs> you know, to be prepared. So you always end on your standing up. And Joan, can I interject? Yeah. Yeah, you and I were talking, you know, for a good 30 minutes before we went live. We're accepting this challenge, too. We aren't done as trainers. My goodness, you're celebrating 30 years and no one sets the bar higher and a better example than constantly looking at trends and trying to figure out what's the next great thing we can come out with and how can I help administrative professionals position against what might even be seen as threats we accept the same challenge. We need to grow too. You know, we aren't done. So this is across every, every role, every position. And as you showed on your chart, they're getting it. Other people are doing it. Why wouldn't you? You can just do it. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm just watching our time. So just to let everyone know what we're doing and we're going to keep going. We still have a few more items to cover with you and we want to do Q&A and also to let you know Julie and I are happy to stay on you know five to ten minutes after uh, for those of you who can stay and want to stay and have burning questions for us so we'd be happy to do that we don't want to cut you short today um, all right so oh I've got to answer that question how do you choose so be very clear on your goals and your objectives what are your goals for 2020 and I'm not saying moving up a ladder, that kind of goal. Again, we're talking about your developmental goals. Um, and then what are your goals for the next two years? Because whatever your goal is two years from now, you may need to work on it this year. Second, talk to your executive. Oh my gosh, this is so important. Include your executive in this conversation. What recommendations, you know, like, and I love that Julie says, you've got to go inside you. Very important. And then you also need to see what your executives see because they see things you don't see. So ask them what should be on my development this year. And that's a great way to start a conversation about getting approval for training. Where do you think I need to excel this year? What am I missing? What am I not doing that you see? and get that feedback. And then from there, you can you know, then figure out what you need to do. The third is you could do what we call a 360 feedback. That's where you go beyond your executive. So you would have a list of things that you want to be rated on, and you would take it to maybe like 12 people who know you very well. They all do their assessment on you, and then you're able to look at that. And now you're getting a fuller picture of, your strengths and the areas you need to grow. So again, remember there's more than your executive, you know, there's other people who see you. And then you could also use our administrative competency assessment. Um, I'm sorry, I wish I had one to show you. It covers, we actually use this in our coaching work and in our training work. It is proprietary information, but it is uh, a hidden page on our website that we could share with you where to go. When we send your follow-up email, we'll put the link in there because it's too long for me to tell you what it is. But this is all through my research that I've done. There are uh, about 15 main competency areas that you can rate yourself in, and that gives you a really good uh, tool to use to assess. All right, now we got to get to the, the next really important question. How do you choose what's right for you? Okay, so now you know you want to do all these things. Now there are 100 options today, not like 30 years ago when I started Office Dynamics. It was just Office Dynamics, basically giving admin specific training. So that could be an hour and we're not gonna take an hour of your time. So I will quickly throw out some ideas and then Julie, I think if you have, you do have ideas to add as well. So first of all, what is your preferred learning style? That to me is very important as somebody who's been in training for 30 years. What is your learning style? For me, I am a hands-on person. I want to be in the room. I want to be engaged. I want to be moving around. I want to be talking to people. I want to see it, feel it, touch it. I'm, I'm, and I'm sorry. I know I'm doing online training, but I'm just telling you, this is my preference as a student. 
If I have that option, that's the option for me. Then, you know, I will have other options as second and third. So what do you like? Do you like to learn online? Maybe you're fine with that. But we also find in, in training studies and industry studies, people, when we do watch online, we're not always fully engaged in it. So, but it's still a good, very good option. Second is budget, of course, budget. Now that's a huge thing. We could talk to you for an hour on budget. All I want to say is don't always lock yourself into a budget. Just because you're told there isn't money. I know personally as an assistant, my executive found money to send me to events. There are workarounds. But it goes back to what Julie said. She fought for three years to get training into her organization. It's really a matter of how badly do you want it and how much are you willing to fight for it? How creative are you willing to be? We have a lot of assistants who are very creative. They cover their training and then their company covers their travel. I mean, learn to negotiate, learn to persuade. I mean, this isn't just, you know, throw it out there and gee, I hope I get a yes. This is work, but it's your career. It's you, it's your future. Um, third, the length of the course. So maybe what's your commitment time? Can you, do you need micro learning where you're getting just like six minutes here and there of little video chunks? Can you commit to three days of fully, full engagement? So you look at that. The fourth thing, who is teaching? Please, please, please look at the facilitator's credibility. There is everyone on the moon anymore that is coming out and training assistants. <laughs> And many of them don't have a clue what it's like to be an assistant. So I'm begging you for your own benefit. You know, when you, you learn from somebody who's walked in your shoes, it's a whole different picture, right, Julie? Um, uh, and then last, if you're thinking about conferences, asking yourself, do you like bigger events? Do you like smaller events? I mean, be selective because if you only have a if you only have a limited you know budget and amount of time you want to be very selective all right julie i'll throw it over to you <laughs> um so i'm going to build on the one word you used i loved it be creative not just in how you approach and and how you're asking for approval but we're seeing a lot of this in our chat today too be creative in how you want to, what, what you want to grab. Maybe you can't commit to going back to school. Maybe you can't get the training that's paid for by your executive. Then think outside the box. Get out of the box. I hate that phrase. I shouldn't even have used it. But get creative. You can see I read. I'm on LinkedIn. There's so many great resources there. Free, free, free. So many things out there. That is how you start to prime that pump and get those juices flowing. Then you're engaged, then you become passionate, and then you're ready to ask for the bigger things. So I like that creativity piece. Again, I'm gonna build out on the other thing you said. You know, We need to think about our, our customer surveys. Yes, you have to look inside. You also need to talk to your customers. Great way to start that conversation. This is what I am desiring. This is what I think I need. Would you agree? Wow, you got them right there. You're at the table. And now you can start having that conversation. So, yeah, customer surveys. But to build out on that, work your network. If you know other people who are getting training, ask them, how did you do it? Where did you go? What did you learn? And don't think about your network. It's just within your company. I found Office Dynamics by reaching out to another company excuse me, in my hometown. They were the ones who were using Office Dynamics. Hello to all our friends at Nationwide. <laughs> so you, you can start networking. Also, you don't have to do it within your profession. Don't let someone tell you this training is not good for an admin. I wouldn't have gone to project management training if I had believed that. So work your network and be creative. Agree 100% with Joan. Audit the training. Ask questions. Ask us, we'll help you. We're there to support you. So do your research. Remember, this is an investment. Whether you're spending money or not, what about your time? Value yourself. I want you to do your research. Be thoughtful though, but don't get mired in that analysis paralysis. This is where you wanna start putting some goals around it, 
hold yourself accountable in this process. Make sure you give yourself measurable steps. I'm going to have training by September 2020. So therefore, I need to identify something by May 1. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Give yourself measurable steps. And then again, communicate this out loud. This is where that accountability comes in. Hey, have you signed up for that training yet? Those are the things that keep us accountable. Trust me, if you don't drive yourself through this journey, life gets in the way. It's up to you to keep yourself in the equation. And then lastly, I want to share wash, rinse, repeat. Don't stop. Again, you've primed that pump. The water's flowing. If you drop the handle, the water stops flowing. You're in it now. So keep it up. Wash, rinse, repeat. Do it again. Don't stop. It's very important, too, that you show a transfer of knowledge. You can add acronyms to your signature. You can ask your executive for approval. But if you don't show them a lift, a transfer of knowledge, it's going to get harder to get approved the next time. And then finally, pay forward. That's that lead up. Share opportunities. If you had the chance to read a great book, share it. If you learned a skill, a, a process, share it. Lift up. That's our responsibility to the legacy of our profession. Very, very good. I like that. Show them a lift. That's a really good way to say that. Um, well, let's see. I know I'm going to pull pull it, kind of adjust our schedule, just like at the office. We have to adapt and change <laughs> because we've taken so much time, but all really, really good information. And that's why I didn't want to cut us short. But hang on, if you can stay on, stay on with us. Um, we actually wanted to talk to you about your career portfolio is a part of your loving your career, but I'm afraid we're not going to have time for that one today. Otherwise, we're going to go way over, and I know some of you can't do that. All we were going to really talk about, it, it's important to have one to get started. This is a great time to start it, but we'll circle back with that one on the career portfolio, Julie. Um, because some of you do have to go, I just I want to quickly give you some really, really important announcements. And then I promise we're going to get to your questions because I can't wait to see what questions you have for us. So first of all, because we love your career and it's our 30th year anniversary, we want to do some extra special big discounts for you to help you be able to attend and learn and grow. So first of all, the world-class assistant designation course. That's important to, to strive for designations now. Anyways, it starts in March with Julie in Houston. We have, I think, nine, eight cities on the calendar this year. We're giving a $300 discount if you sign up by February 14th. And the code is all capital letters LOVE because we love you. I'm curious, are any of you planning to come? We're going to be in a lot of different cities. We're going to Nashville and Chicago. And where else are you going? Boston, Baltimore, Seattle. Seattle. So are any of you good? Jeanette's going to attend in Chicago. No, we're going to come. Julie would absolutely love to see you. Um, the second we're going to do today for you for a gift for our annual conference, which Julie will also be at. And we're really going to dig into your profession. Um, it's, let's see, $200 discount off. And the code is LOVE in all capital letters. And you can sign up at, oh, good, you're going to go to Nashville, Boston. Oh, Julie, good. You're going to look like you're going to meet some new friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, Yay. <laughs> to Julie and well, you'll see her. She'll be right there in front of you and, and only like 15 other people. So you'll know her really well. Um, where was I going with that? Conference. You have to go to officedynamicsconference.com. Then, very exciting, in like two weeks, I'm going to be in Orlando doing a half-day workshop with the Lake Buena Vista Orlando um, IAP chapter. If you want to sign up for that at our website, you can still do that. Talk about cost-effective training. It is super cost-effective. 
And then today, even though we didn't get to talk about the career portfolio, today we are releasing, and you're the first to hear about it, our career portfolio ebook. And just for today only, for you folks, it's $5 off, and you could use coupon code L-O-V-E in capital letters and the number five. Okay, let's get to questions. Ready, Julie? Shall we roll? Malia, go ahead. Throw them at us. We're ready. <laughs> okay, let's see. There are a lot of questions, ladies. I don't think we're going to get to all of them. This was a great webinar. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll go for a while. <laughs> Okay, so first and foremost, a few people ask this question. How can you natural how can a naturally low-key person exert their power? Ooh, Julie, you better take that one. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I not um, low key for sure. <laughs> you know, and right there. But go ahead. Don't look at that as a weakness. That can be a strength. We have a lot of people that we work with that are the experts and want to tell us, right? So leverage your strength. One of the ways that I find that this is easiest, though, for a person who may be a little more timid, maybe need to get their legs under them a little bit, you don't have to start at the biggest audience. You don't have to start with a huge group. Remember, we have an opportunity here to be influencers and daily leaders. So start one on one. Um, maybe there's someone who is is lost in a process, could use the best practice. Work with them. Uh, maybe you need help. Boy, there's so much power in us showing a little vulnerability. It's those human moments. So get yourself on the team. Get yourself in a project. Get exposure. Maybe it's a team, a small team. Maybe it's just one on one. But don't let that be your excuse to not do it. Then I'm telling you, word spreads. You will develop credibility and a reputation. And it just builds from there, from there, and from there. This is not a weakness. This is your strength. My guess is you are probably a phenomenal listener and observer. You're probably really good at working with your head up and your eyes out. So leverage that strength. Um, that's awesome, Mike. And I was thinking a way you could do that, because I'm thinking of assistance. I've had a coach one on one is though it's the words you use. You can be powerful through your words. So instead of saying, well, it would be nice if I could have this, you know, in a week or so, it would be. I need this information from you by next Tuesday and a business day. Yeah, great. So in your verbiage, it's how you word things that you're you're not wishy-washy, you're very firm, so be a firm communicator. So that's um, another way. Um, I think body language, we portray power through our body language, how we sit, how we stand, how we walk, how we present ourselves. So those are other ways that you can demonstrate that. By being a great gatekeeper, not letting people through. I know this is a, tr a problem an assistant had last year. She was so sweet and she worked for a huge executive of a huge corporation, but callers would get past her and he would not be happy with that. Um, and so he really worked with her. We actually wrote out <coughs> typed phrases and put them up by her telephone so that she wouldn't get pulled in and that she had these specific phrases to say that she came across more a powerful and assertive with the caller versus them running over her and getting through to her CEO. Okay, next question. Okay, Linda says, yes, power is so intriguing. How do we <laughs> use it wisely? Uh, well, you know, I saw another person in the chat put out a really great word. It's humbly, it's responsibly. Just because you have power doesn't mean it comes in tandem with being obnoxious. And again, that word expert. So um, yeah, there's a responsibility with it. You have to be humble. Um, I like the low key image. You're, you're interjecting, you're influencing, you're picking the right time, the right place. Um, and again, you're just showing people 
through your reputation and your trademark experience that you're credible. Joan? I just was jotting that down really quick. You, My immediate thought I came to my mind is you show power when you have compassion mm -hmm. and empathy. Power isn't about being bullheaded, strong-minded, you know, I mean, strong-minded, yeah, in your thoughts, but we become powerful when we're authentic. If you want to write that down, authenticity is very important today. When you're transparent, transparency is powerful. Not when you hold everything in and you don't want to share with other assistants, okay? That's not power. Power is being transparent. It is having empathy. It is having compassion. It is being a leader. It is being a mentor. All right, Malia. Okay, um, moving forward with the powerful theme. <laughs> How do you be powerful when you have a boss that keeps you powerless? Ooh. She wants to be the voice to the big boss. She takes credit for our work. She talks bad about us when things go wrong and she cannot answer questions. <laughs> wow, Joan, you wanna take that one? Uh, yeah, I hate, sorry, I hate to hear though that kind of conversation because I feel like there aren't, well, one, I hate that people do that, but two, I feel like you don't have a lot of options as the employee. Um, obviously you can't really uh, rebuttal her or approach her. You have to be careful. You don't look like you're tearing her down. I see Lisa Olson is on. Lisa Olson, if you have any answers, because you're always good as well. Um, she's another colleague of ours in the industry and she's amazing. So my thought is you have to just continue to do your good work, continue. I think though you should let people know what you have done. If something truly is your work, your effort, not in a bragging way, but you know, don't be afraid to say, you know, I came up with that, I created that, or I thought of that, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, that type of thing to make sure you are recognized. Um, that's a tough one because without going above, you know, over them, it, it's just very difficult, especially if they're the manager. You know, that's just not an easy one. And I'm sorry, I don't have better answers for you. You're kind of stuck in a way, but I think show your education and your smarts to other people whenever you have the opportunity. Yeah, I, uh, I think too, this could be a great critical conversation to have, you know, and, and be careful how you position it, but you could say, one of my goals is to be able to contribute to blah, 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 and, and then receive feedback or, you know, kind of holding them accountable to their behavior um, and maybe positioning a critical conversation around that, a uh, little bit of accountability, uh, calling them out. But, but again, it has to be done very tactfully, especially if this is your executive. Um, the other thing is I love saying, you know, this is more a reflection on them than you. And I am a firm believer we get what we give. So don't follow that example. Make sure that if you partner with someone or someone did the heavy lifting on a project, you make sure they get their recognition and that you recognize them. And then this also can become a strategy with your executive if you give them what you're hoping to get back. Um, wow, I really recognize how your contribution to that project really took it to the next level. I would like to model that behavior myself. So, you know, give what you want to get back. Um, thank you. And I want to just apologize if anyone's hearing steady static with us. I think it seemed to start up when Malia got on. So I don't know, maybe with three of us on, it's making it that way. But Malia, we need you to stay. I just okay. wanted everybody to know. I mean, I apologize if that's distracting. I'm to Some people are having to sign off and go. But um, should we take a few more questions for those of you that want to stay on? Maybe we'll take three more questions. How's that? Okay. Um, let's see. I tried turning my sound down. Maybe that'll help. 
Uh, Donna wants to know, do you have tips on engaging an overly self-sufficient VP who has trouble letting go and giving me meaningful work? <laughs> you want me to take it, Jen? No, I uh, yes, go ahead. You can start. Um, so again, you have to show them the value. This is that executive speak. Um, so you have to bring forward a data-driven story um, and, and show them the value. And also make sure it is something that they value. So you need to have that conversation. We use the word over and over. You are in a partnership and the partnership is a build over time. And one of the most critical steps to this conversation is to or, or to this partnership is this conversation around perceptions and expectations and understanding what they feel you can do and then sharing with them what more you can do and how if you do it, you're actually going to give them more time back to do the things that they should be doing. We all know they could do their own travel. We all know, yep, there's an app for that, but you shouldn't have to. So I call it the pool. Instead of waiting for that push down, get in there and pull it out of them. Very good. All right, next we'll take a second one and then one more. Leah. Ooh. Now we can't hear you at all. Okay, how about now? Can you hear me? Hello? Yep, we got you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Linda and Susie have similar questions. Um, with retirement coming in the next few months, how do you continue investing in you? Where do you take your 40-year career? And, on the, and to piggyback on that, um, Let's see, what do you recommend? What training do you recommend to someone who's built a career and is now in the last chapter of that career, but wants to be, still wants to be relevant? You become an office dynamics trainer. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the short answer. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I did. No. <laughs> so, I think it's great that you're asking this question because you can't quit before you quit. And what I challenge everyone, and we have people as just like yourself in our classrooms and what's your legacy? Because whether you've had a 10 year career, 20, 40 year, you're going to be remembered for your last six months. So what's your legacy? What's your attitude? Find the next you. This is a huge thing on my docket. Joan and I, she's aware of it, that succession planning. If we truly believe that we are in these critical roles, we need successors. So find the next you. And then I would take you back to some of all of our earlier points around your next step. Think about it. Give yourself time to think about it. Very good. All right, we, I guess we'll just have to take one more. Um, I know I'm watching the chat here and there's still a lot of good questions and um, maybe what we could do is save those questions and you, at a, from time to time we've done just a question and answer webinar. So we may use some of those to talk about later or to actually create another webinar. So um, one more question, Malia. Okay. Uh, Laura, I really enjoy Monday Motivators. Also, I have the same issue. I feel anxious on going to my leader to present my ideas. How do I get over that? Do you feel anxious presenting ideas? Is that what I heard? She feels anxious, yes, to present her ideas to her leader. Um, well, that's like a whole training class. <laughs> the short answer is, and I know Julie will definitely be able to, but really get it, get your thoughts very organized. First of all, is what I would say. You need to make sure you're organized, or your ideas are organized. They're thoughtful. You have facts to back them up. Um, you know, it's about why you want to, why a process, maybe there's a new process you want to present to your executive or how you two should work more effectively when he travels. Just make sure you've been very thoughtful and you don't waste your executive's time. You definitely have to focus on what's the benefits to them, because if you want to persuade them or convince them for something, it's not just about you, but what's the benefit to them. 
So those are a few quick ideas. Julie, I know you have some to add. Yeah, you know, um, so just something you referenced, Joan, we actually kind of touched on this on that webinar we did um, last Administrative Professional Day. I don't know how long replays are out there and available, but we walk through some of those points that you just made um, because it is. You have to be thoughtful. The only other one I would add is you have to practice, 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 because mm -hmm. probably the biggest thing that gets in our way around these critical conversations is the emotion. And so you got to get the emotion out of the way. And the best way to do that is to practice, practice, practice. And, you know, amongst yourself, in the mirror, but then maybe even with, with an accountability partner, a truth sayer. Uh, that would be, to me, that's probably one of the most important things. Yeah. That's great advice. Great, great, great advice. Thank you. That's why it's so good to have two heads doing the webinar. <laughs> <laughs> so we can kind of help each other out here. So... Um, as we wrap up, thank you all, first of all, for coming. We love your career. We hope you love your career. We're here to guide you in your career all the time. We're just a phone call away. You know, you could call us once in a while. <laughs> and um, we have lots of tools to provide you with to move along your career from, you know, free to the big kahuna. <laughs> So uh, just a reminder, we are going to do, I am going to do a webinar on the 27th of February, which is actually Digital Learning Day. So I'm going to do a great um, webinar on uh, how do we deal with a complex and ever-moving dynamic workplace through communication. So we hope you could do that. Oh, this Friday, by the way, this Friday is um, we're gonna wear red. So we're celebrating wear red this Friday for honor in honor of women and heart care and heart awareness. So if you wanna tune into my Facebook Live at 10, I will have on some kind of red, plus my red lipstick as always. But if you wanna join in, please do so. And we're gonna have a little, a uh, few giveaways if you post some selfies, so you can do that. Like I said, Julie's gonna be in Houston in March, so if you wanna sign up for that class, um, mm -hmm. seats are filling up, and it's a great time to, to register for that. So we love you all. Thank you, Julie, for everything. <laughs> Thank you. Here today. Bye, everyone.